Hello everyone. Today we will take up the fifth chapter of your course book that is Many Worlds of Literature and the title is Unleash Your Creativity written by Robert Epstein. So this is an essay and it addresses a very relevant subject. Every human being as we all know have a creative potential but we very often do not tap it. We are all creative but we are either hesitant or we are not motivated enough and we feel that we are not creative. This essay gives some guidelines as to how to tap one's creativity or to set it free. Creativity should not be defined in a narrow sense as if related only to the creative artist but it means a new way of thinking of approaching a problem of solving it it means a constant stretching of one's ability now if somebody asks you a question are you a creative person and like most people we are we all will answer no we are not throughout our lives we are told that Creative is a rare and mysterious thing that only artists possess and they are only creative. That is its right brain function or whatever it means. But after nearly 20 years of laboratory research, however, the author concludes that creativity is within everyone's reach. No exception. Anybody can be a creative person. Indeed, in recent years, he has successfully applied some lessons of laboratory in real life settings with children and teachers, parents and corporate executives. To unleash your creativity potential means to set free your creativity, master these strategies and then you will find that you stand between you and some of the most creative people in history now the first one is capturing capturing means getting hold of new ideas which are fleeting like rabbits they are coming to our mind through our consciousness if you don't grab them quickly they are usually gone for ever so whatever idea comes in your mind people who are serious about exploring their creativity they should learn ways to heed and preserve their new ideas they have this capturing skills he gives you an example of salvador dali the great surrealist painter who used to grab ideas for his paintings and what he used to do was he used to sit in an armchair with a key in one hand and hold it over a plate placed on the floor when he drifted off to sleep the sound of the key hitting the plate would awaken him and immediately he would sketch the images that he was seeing in his dream so we can say that the ideas which come to our mind in semi-consciousness when we are half asleep these ideas if captured they become the source of creativity we all have incredible perceptual experiences in the moments before we fall fully asleep and this painter he simply developed a way to seize some of them artists carry often sketch pads inventors and writers carry notes or notepads or laptop computers and make sometimes notes on the napkins if things available with them so they keep these things handy why because whatever the idea comes into their mind they simply note it down here is one simple exercise that the essayist has developed to persuade people of their creative potential and he calls it capturing a daydream whatever you dream during day close your eyes let your mind wander freely for a few minutes relax and just let your thoughts go without deliberately guiding them so you will see that your mind soon leaves the room it leaves the earth and it drifts off to the stars 
given enough time and no distractions, everyone sees, hears or experiences things impossible to experience in reality. So, these are the ideas which come to your mind when you relax. I have conducted this exercise all over the world including Japan where perhaps for cultural reasons few people claim to be creative. But after a few minutes, Japanese audiences reported daydreams every beat as rich as Salvador Dali's, said one man. I flew to the top of the building next door and saw this building crumble to the ground while I ate a sandwich. So he was hoping for a better job. Capturing is easier in certain settings and at certain times. For some people, the three B's of creativity that is, they find ideas coming into their mind when they are either in the bed or taking bath or they are traveling in a bus. And he says the mind is more fertile at such places, especially if you keep writing materials handy in those locations. Others need to sit by a pool or in a lonely cabin in the woods. Second is challenging. One way to accelerate the flow of new ideas is to put yourself in difficult situations where you are likely to fail. Surpri surprisingly, failure can be a wellspring of creativity. Why? Because new ideas come into your mind and you find solution to those challenges. Typically, when we fail to do something, we feel frustrated and most important for creativity, we begin trying out other behaviors. Many ideas compete vigorously, greatly enhancing the creative process. So you start to turn a doorknob that has always turned easily. It won't budge. You turn the knob harder, then you try to pull it up or push it down. You may even wiggle it and sometimes you shove the door with your shoulder or you kick it with your foot. You may even shout for help. These efforts, they form established behaviors, will probably lead to a new solution. So creativity in short is not mystical. It is an extension of what you already know. Ultimate problems or open-ended challenges which have no solutions can also be used to accelerate creative outputs. Do we really want to place ourselves in frustrating situations? Empathetically, yes. If you are feeling stained, you are in the company of the greatest poets, composers and inventors of all time. More likely than not, you are on the verge of new idea. With children, friends or colleagues, try spending 15 minutes a week solving one of these Either you become a millionaire in a week, fix it so that you will never have to do another household chore, change your miserable local climate, aging is a drag, eliminate it. You wouldn't find solutions of course, but these unsolvable challenges will stimulate lots of interesting new ideas. Third is the broadening. The more knowledge you have, the more diverse that knowledge is. The greater your potential for creative output. In 1940s, Swiss engineer George de Mistral was returning from the woods when he became annoyed by small birds attached to his pants. Under a microscope, he saw small hooks and that grabbed loops of fiber in the cloth. Using his experience in many fields, de Mistral began to experiment to create artificial hook and loops. So countless advances were made possible because their creators had experience in diverse fields. If you want to enhance your own creativity, learn about subjects you know nothing about, you don't want to know about. If you normally read mystery novels, pick up a history book and if you usually come home and put tennis game on TV, turn to one of the educational channels instead. So variety or the broadening of knowledge is important. Fourth is surrounding. Finally, you can enhance your creativity by surrounding yourself 
with diverse stimuli and even more potent is by changing those stimuli regularly put unusual items on your desk in the morning a mickey mouse hat pliers a candle or just rearrange a few things in your room diverse and ever changing stimuli help promote two diverse and ever changing ideas how you interact with others is another form of creative surrounding brainstorming for example works to some extent because it exposes team participants to multiple stimuli but it also inhibits creativity by exposing individuals to disapproval in his research he has found that a shifting group one that shifts back and forth from private sessions to team meetings typically generate twice as many ideas as the brainstorming group because creativity is always an individual process with new creative powers we are all better able to solve the little problems that beset us daily the resulting explosion of ideas and accomplishments could make those of the renaissance look like a ride on a stationary bicycle